just want to talk about colour. Even though I do go on about uh, tonal values quite a bit and I do 100% believe that that is the absolute correct approach. It should be our first instinct is to think what value is, is that mountain back there up against this value, the passage there, what is a tonal range is that going to be in. But once I've done the drawing, the blocking in, the uh, placement of major shapes and I'm starting to plan the next step, I do like to make sure I'm thinking how is this orangey brown going to go up against the blue water or even this little apricot coloured building up against the sky colour, the mountain colour, the background colour. And the bigger the shape is of colour, so this is a, a nice big rooftop, I tend to only sort of put a, a small amount of brighter, warmer colour just because of the overall saturation of the shape. I know that I don't have to go sort of overboard putting extra colour in just to make it work. So we'll just move on to the next one. So here we have a just a little canal type scene and it was kind of perfectly balanced with the red up against the green. But I was still looking at greying off these colours here, bringing in more colour on this wall here to make sure that the painting looked lively and I'm using colour here. So it's getting all of our ducks in a row and then hitting it with even that little bit of yellow on there. That actually yellow wasn't there, but I used uh, that colour because I thought, you know what, more red was only going to create a little bit more sort of visual fatigue. Uh, orange could have worked, but definitely didn't want blue or green. So yeah, so it's where and when we use colour. It's for me, even though it, I have to have that colour theme and scheme in place before I start, but it's that final little aspects that I think really do bring the painting to life. And this is a rural scene and I have to thank Alice Hauser for the reference photo, even though I did bring in different cows and I reversed her original scene, which I like to do if I ever borrow another artist's uh, reference photo. But it just had beautiful depth and colour all the way through, even though I did exaggerate the blue through here, just to keep that colour, the yellow up against the blue, and even the reds in here, it's more of a yellow-blue colour scheme, but it was just a lovely um, time for to be able to get sort of an opportunity to get lovely depth, but also keep that colour going all the way through as well. This is a little scene in Maine, I believe it's called the, the Geek. It's a funny sort of spelling and but I'd had this photo for a while. I always liked the sparkly light on the water and the guy in the boat was a great little element to help tie the two shapes together. But I did Photoshop the red onto there. It was all green and I felt the scene overall was just just dying on me a little and I thought, you know what, a bit of red here in the foreground will help create more depth and distance. So don't be afraid to see a blue boat and make it yellow or see a green boat and make it red. And coming on with red boats, thankfully this scene was pretty much how it looks. So it was perfectly set up for bluey greys in the background, greens and softer pinks and even though there's actually the Brisbane River in here, I decided for artistic reasons to, to sort of leave him out and just haze that all off, even putting a little bit of smoke in there. But just that sheer mass of red on the boat in the foreground was going to give me depth and distance straight away. So then all I needed to bring was the yellows and grey them off as they went back. And I had beautiful and marvellous depth and distance. This is something completely different. I used to paint a lot more wildlife animals, more, more birds, I have to admit. I've always loved 
the Australian native birds. This is a little, I believe it's a female zebra finch. And even though I've harmonized the color with the orange in the uh, ground area, and that's of course going to reflect back up into the scene and I've used a few darks and lights and but I've used the color of the beak so sometimes it only needs to be a small little area but all importantly with the eye the little bit of red there it's in my focal area so that'll be the time one to identify that that's where I'll be using color but two to be able to get it as well so that's where we need clean brushes uh, clean color mixes to really get these colors to come through. This is just a, a little gentle landscape. I actually did an earlier version where the cows were in the middle of the distance, but I always thought, you know what, I'd love to do a little softer, more sort of reminiscent of an older school of Australian art and art where they didn't really sort of go for bright colors or, or flashy sort of colors. So I thought, can I use subtle use of color to make this work? So I've got a little bit of blue there, which actually wasn't there, but with the greens, the yellows, uh, with the overall colour scheme, and then bringing in that nice blue sky up into here, which will resonate down into the, into the actual foreground, so it becomes a complete scene with just a very subtle use of colour. This one's actually not far away from uh, the scene before, and it's a scene from Country Victoria, my recent uh, teaching and painting trip down there. And once again, it's one of those ones that's saturated in orange, so I don't have to work too hard. I was more looking at the actual uh, edges and the use of uh, light and dark and those sharpness of edges and bigger shapes coming forward but it still is quite saturated and it was a very late afternoon sky so it was really quite blue almost looking sort of a nighttime scene so it was quite an interesting effect but so the point of the moral of the story is or the point I was trying to get to is let's think about colors to start with to make sure we're going to be having a good finished painting but then right at the end be thinking oh I've got to get a little bit of that war orange here compared to the grey orange in the distance. So if we grab a little bit of that and put it up against that, you can see how that is quite, only slightly, but it is definitely greyer, duller. So that's how we not only create depth and distance, but we really do enhance our focal points. So it's a colour's a fun one. It's it's something that we can really run with. So um, so long as we don't overdo it, that's the one thing that we don't want to do is, is to make them too warm, too sweet, or in Australian terms, too chocolate box. That means it's the painting's just surviving on pretty well colour alone. The scene wasn't that good, the values aren't that good, so we throw in a heap of colour to try and save and rescue it. That's kind of the last thing we want. We want that colour balance, the depth of colour, which is normally represented through the tones as well or of course as well from the getting warmer into this foreground so okay dog everyone talk to you next month bye for now when it comes to art there is no single right or wrong answer however there are still a lot of concepts and techniques that students need to learn to create a strong visual language this course is designed to help you develop and find your own visual language so that you can start expressing yourself more confidently because over the years I've studied and noted the areas where students tend to struggle the most and then I've delved deeply into these topics so we will cover the basics of colour, edge, how to achieve a strong contrast from light to dark, focal points and creating depth so that you can start to use it effectively in your work. I'll demonstrate a wide range of subjects which I believe will broaden your horizons and allow you to gain experiences that you may have only dreamed of trying. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of how to express your own visual language and create artwork that is both successful and expressive. I invite you to join me for an exciting year 
of learning and exploration 